Yo, this is a ton of place. Pokemon Gold! And now we are done in Cerulean City. We got ourselves the Cascade Badge. And the power has been restored, and we got ourselves the Rail Pass. Now we can travel back to Yoto whenever we want by going to Saffron City and taking the Magnet Train. But there's something else we can get as a reward for getting the power restored to Kanto. And what to do, we need to go to Lavender Town. The Kanto radio station was down because of electricity, but now it is up again. Let's talk a bit to the people in here. Many people are hard at work here, in the radio tower. They must be doing their best to put on good shows. Welcome! Feel free to look around anywhere on this floor. Ah, so you're the Sitana who solved the power plant problem? Thanks to you, I never lost my job. I tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please take this as my thanks. You receive the expansion card. With that thing, you can tune in to the radio programs in Kanto. Go ha ha ha. That's cool. Hey there, fellow. I am the Super Music Director. I'm responsible for the gorgeous melodies that go out over the year. Dumpy Square, grab your music of the year! Oh, that's a nice rhyme to it. Sorry, but you can only tour the ground floor. Ever since Joto's radio tower was taken over by a criminal gang, we had had to step our up security. Aw, oh, that's too bad. We can explore the other floors in the radio tower here because of Team Rocket. Ah oh well, no biggie. So now that we got ourselves the expansion card, we can get some use for this in the near future. But since we got ourselves the Cerulean badge, let's go for the next badge. The next badge we'll be going for will be in Seldon City. But before we do that, let's go back to Cerulean City. There's something we can do here too. Are you collecting Kanto Gym badges? We are. We're gonna talk to this guy here. There used to be a cave here that had horribly powerful Pokemon in it. Uh huh? My item finder is responding! It is. There's an item here. And you can get it. I just don't remember where. So, where can that item be? Hmm, I can't remember. Of course, the item finder, um, damn it. Anyways, the item he's searching for is to see in the direction. The item finder is responding because there's an item in the water to the his left. I won't really need to pick it up though because I won't really use the item, but meh, let's just do it. I mean, I would initiate what I want to do, so might as well just do it. Here and we surf, and we're gonna pick up the item. Yay, cute Lapras. Oh, we have a fight. Seeking. Not interested though, Seeking, so get lost. The Bashirk Gene. Shirtjin is a, um, a bit of a weird Pokemon move. Basically, what Shirtjin does is that if you hold in a Pokemon, it'll increase its attack by quite a, quite a lot, actually. And the problem is, you will always be confused. So it's a gamble item. I don't really like these gamble items, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna head south. Route 5. This was the uh, Pokemon breeding center in Generation 1, but not anymore. 
Urgh! My sense of sinister shadow hovering over you. Take this to ward it off. You receive the cleanse tag. You were in mortal danger, but you're protected now. My grandma's into warning of what she believes used to be evil spirits. I'm sure that she startled you. <laughs> I guess I'm fine. Now what the clan stack does though is that if you have uh, the clan stack equipped on any of your Pokemon in your party, it will reduce uh, the encounter rate for finding wild Pokemon in the grass and in caves and dungeons. Which of course can be a bit nice, but in general though if you want to not want to fight these Pokemon, just put on a repel. Now we're gonna head west of Saffron City. This is route number um, six, I think. I can't remember. Anyways, there are some Dark type Pokémon in the grass here. So if you really want to have a Dark type Pokémon, you ought to go and capture one and use it. So it's not really needed, but it's nice to have. And we are in Celadon City. Just like in Goldenrod City, Celadon City is rather large, and it has the department store. Of generation 1 it's still here and also has the game arcade from generation 1 as well just too bad that the uh, department store no longer sells uh, the evolutional stones and it also no ice beam to get from the vendor on top but that's some cool stuff here though but there's also another one thing we want to do here let's just go ahead and do that right away because Southern City as we know has a Pokemon gym the gym of grass Pokemon led by Erika. Let's go down here, we cut a tree. And we can move on. Go to the left here. And we can go here. <laughs> this gym is great! Only girls are allowed here! And this is great. So you can't, you can't enter it, they think it's great. Anyways, this place is grass type, so Teflosion will do well here. I'm gonna use him. Of course, if you wanna make it easier, just use ho here, but it's not really needed. Here we go. See the uh, the guy that says Shield Champ is making? He's not here because he's a male. He's not allowed in here. But let us go inside anyways. We wanna get a Pokemon badge. Let's go. We'll show you Pokemon moves that Erica taught us. Okay. Show us them. We face off against twins Joe and Zoe. We send out Victory Bell. That's the Pokemon I want to roll my Weeping Bell from. But I have to get a Leaf Stone, but I'll get that one soon. Flame Wheel. Let's do the Flame Wheel. Burn this Victory Bell down to size. And down it goes. Next up is... Vile Plume. So... V Victory Bell's evolution form is uh, Victory Bell of Leaf Stone. If you use Leaf Stone on Gloom, you'll turn into Vile Plume. Both these Pokémon are Grass and... Uh, psychic Tot? No, Grass and Poison. Uh, Vile Plume has more special stats, while uh, Victory Bell has more uh, attack stats. That's mainly the big reasons between these two Pokemon. Maybe be Twins Joe and Zoe. Oh, we lost! Oh, a battle? That's kind of scary, but okay. 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 Let's have a battle. With Picnicker Tanya. And Tanya sends out Executor. Executor is dual type grass and psychic, so you can use dark type moves here too. But in general, and it'll burn on the side to shoot to the Executor in. Let's be careful, Executor has a big chunk of special defense. Even though he doesn't survive this, but. 47 on Teflosion. And we beat Picnic Atonia. Oh, that's it? It is. 
wait! Only girls are allowed here! Well, that's unfair. What if a guy wants to get a badge then? How can he get a badge then? He's not allowed to? That's just unfair. Skip Loom. Flying and Grass type, so you can use an Ice type Pokemon here. We'll do four time damage. That's right. If you have, for example, Ice Punch, I could use a Gold Duck here, and with Ice Punch, I will do four times damage, but nah, not needed. XP for me and for Ethan Bell. Next up is Hopip, the pre evolutional form of Skiploom. The so called very hard Pokemon that my friend Anthony the Hiker actually struggled to beat with his matchup. Uh, I don't think it. Yeah, it's flying versus fighting, but as far as I know, Hoppy doesn't even learn any flying moves. It's a little XP as well. Last one is Jump Bluff. That is the final evolutional form of Hopip and the evolutional form of Skiploom. I also like how uh, the whole family has changed its colors. Hopip is brown, Skiploom is green, and Jump Bluff is blue. But yeah, Jump Bluff is the fully evolutional form of Hopip. All of them are grass and flying. A crit sets four time damage to the Jump Bluff. No worries for me. And we beat last Michelle. Oh, bleh! Where are you looking at these flowers or at me? Um, I was looking in the sky. Oh wait, there's no sky here. Damn, busted. <laughs> Beauty Julia wants to fight. She sends out Paris. So, a beauty wants to use an ugly Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon logic. I don't want to say that Paris is too ugly, but it doesn't really look that good. It's a bug and po grass type for once, so it hates fire. And that's just good for me. And bye bye, Paris. Let's uh, see you later. And next up is Execute, the pre evolutional form of Executor, with all the eggs. Just like Executor, it's a Grass and Psychic dual type. So if you have a, a Bug type Pokemon, actually, you can do four times damage to this to this uh, Pokemon. Bug types are super good against Psychic and against uh, Grass. Problem with Bug type Generation One is they just were really shit, had very bad moves, and generally not really good. Pin Missile was the best move it did. It was like 15 damage. Uh, or 15 power with possible 5 hits. It's still pretty weak. Next up, we'll fight off against Parasect, which is not a super weak to fire, but that's good for us. We charge out the flame wheel and burn it. And the Parasect will be. See you bye. And the Flotion gets more XP, getting pretty pimped up, and we beat Beauty Julia. How annoying! I guess. And that's about it. We have only Eric Erica left, but before we go against her, let's just check if our Pokemon are ready for this fight. I think it should be. No help lost. Let's just use the Elixir. In case we will need to use more than some some times of my flame wheel, or maybe I have to do Ho-Wo on this, but I think we should be fine. Anyways, it is time for gym battle number 4 in the Kanto region. Kind of ironic that the gym battle number 4 in the generation 1 is Erika too. Anyways, for the 12th badge and the 4th badge in Kanto, this is Erika, the master of grass type. Hello. Lovely better, isn't it? It's so pleasant. I'm afraid I made those off. My name is Erika. I am the leader of Seldon Gym. Oh. All the way from Yoto, you say? How nice! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you wished to challenge me. Very well, but I shall not lose. Just like she said in Generation 1, and here we go. The battle for the Rainbow Badge against Erika. She sends out a Tangela. So for Tangela, we will use Teflosion. Just do a ordinary flame wheel. It might survive it because it's not too low level compared to my Teflosion. 
but it should be taken out. Yeah, one shot on the Tangela, goodbye. She has a lot of Pokemon here, so it should be a bit of a fight. Next up is Victory Bell, the evolutional form of Weeping Bell and the final evolutional form of Bell Sprout. And that's just to remind you, to get Victory Bell you need to use the Leaf Stone. And if you're playing Generation 2, it's gonna be a bit hard to get one. You'll get one from the grandfather of Bill at the Cerulean Cape if you bring him the correct Pokemon I was looking for. But Victory Bell goes down with one Flame Wheel. Good for us. And next she's gonna use a Jump Bluff. Jump Bluff we faced before, flying and grass, so if you have an ice type move, that would just definitely destroy poor Jump Bluff. But fire should be more enough as well. You can use electric too, but electric will do normal damage here because electric does um, reduce damage against uh, flying types. Oh, it survived. No problem, we will do flame wheel one more time. There we go. Goodbye, jump bluff. There we go. And last but not least, it's Belazum. That is the final evolutional form of Oddish, should you use the Sunstone over the Leaf Stone when you have Gloom in your party. Let's just make this a squash and send out ho -O. ho -O is four times strong to grass types. Both the flying and fire type take reduced damage from grass, meaning that even a very weak grass, grass attack will maybe do one damage to ho -O. Let's use the Fire Blast. And this should be the end for Belasa. Fire Blast. And the health is draining out, and it down it goes. And we have beaten Belasa. And that's it! We have beaten Erika, which was kinda easy, cause we have very really strong Pokemon against her compared to when we faced Misty. Regardless, we win, and we have one more batch. Oh, I can see the feet. You are remarkably strong. I shall give you Rainbow Badge. And we receive the Rainbow Badge. We now have 12 badges. 4 badges in Kanto means we only need 4 more badges in Kanto to finish up here. That was a delightful match. I felt inspired. Please, I wish you to have this TM. It is Giga Drain. It is a wonderful move that drains half the damage it inflicts to heal. Your Pokémon! Please use it if it pleases you. Awesome! Losing leaves a bitter aftertaste, but knowing that there are strong trainers spurs me to do better. So Giga Drain is basically an improved Mega Drain. Mega Drain was kind of cool move to use on uh, Pokémon were weak to grass types. Now we have an even better move to use, which is Giga Drain. And half the damage you do will also recover your health as well. Use it on ho -Oh if I want to, or I can use it on Weeping Bell. Here to ho -Oh means that ho -Oh can really counter Water-type Pokémon efficiently and even keep itself alive. You can use it if you want to, but it's kind of like using Second Fire or Fire Blast. I think I'll take away the Fire Blast because... Uh, it's a bit reduced accuracy and second fire does almost the same, but second fire has almost guaranteed hit chance, so I'll take away the fire blast. Now ho -Oh is looking pretty cool. ho -Oh has a fire move, a grass move, and a flying move. Plus it can recover, so ho -Oh is now very bulky, can survive quite a battle. Now we're still uh, can do some more in this part, so I'm just gonna go out and gonna do some cool stuff here in Seldon City before we call it part before we're gonna head on to our next challenge here in Kanto. Let's cut the tree. We're gonna wander a bit around. Or actually, we should just go in here. Let's see what this guy has said. They're holding an eating contest at the restaurant. Just watching them get goes at me and feels bloated. Yeah, I will feel the same. So they're having an eating contest here. I don't want to interrupt them, but... Check this trash can. We find leftovers. Leftovers is one of the most popular on-hold items in competitive play, 
Leftovers basically restores slightly uh, health over every turn. And fighting in uh, Pokemon competitive plays, leftovers can actually be the deciding factor. Basically what you want to do is to outlast your opponents and then have leftovers heal you slightly but surely back to full health, or close to at least. Card spec protects against special attacks such as fire and water. Get your items at Celadon Depth Store. Yeah, we don't need that though. Celadon City, the city of rainbow dreams. Welcome. We change your coins for fabulous prizes. Which prize do you really like? Yeah, we don't even have any coins. You can get some Pokemon too. If you have 333, if you have 3,333 coins, you get Mr. Mime. And then you have the evil number of 6,666 coins, you get Eevee. And if you have 9,999 coins, you get Porygon. Nice way to get your Pokemon. I want to miss the mime, but I was short by 100 coins. And that sucks. So the game center is in here. Ready to gamble and play. But nothing that I want to be part of. There's actually one cool thing I want to show you guys here in, um, in this place. That's the place here. Seldon Mansion. Why their Pokemon keeps the company so I don't even feel lonely? Melty embrace her money home. Yep, it's a nice ring. The manager suit. This place is Game Freak meeting room. Now you probably know what Game Freak is. Yeah, Game Freak is the company that has made Pokemon. All the Pokemon games is made by Game Freak. So this kind of familiar, this room? Yeah, it looks like your room at home. And here we have the Game Freak development room. Let's talk to these guys. Is that right? I'm the game designer. Filling up your Pokedex is tough, but don't give up. Who, me? I'm the programmer. Play the slot machines. Aren't the twins adorable? Just was pretty too. Oh, I love them. I'm the graphic artist. I drew you. <laughs> it's kind of cool thing. Of course, on the top here, there's nothing to do. There's a room in the back. Only if you go to the back entrance, of course, of this mansion. But I just want to show this cool mansion, the Game Freak Mansion. Just a little uh, shout out to Game Freak that has made these wonderful Pokemon games. And as well, here we have the Pokemon Mart. If you need to buy some items, go in here and buy all your items you need. We have pretty much every item here, all from Pokeballs, to Restore items, to Heals, and X Attack, X Defend if you want to, you can get HP up and Protein and Iron of those. You get a Poke Doll here as well, and you can get some TMs, but none of them are really that super good. You get some Fresh Water and Nets too, but they're not too useful here. So that's basically what we have done now in Seldon City. In the next part we're gonna head towards the Cycling Road that we've had in Generation 1 been changed a bit so we'll take a trip inside that place in our next part and see what we can expect in here. So as always if you have any feedback on Let's Play or want to discuss this game then leave a comment below this video. If you want to be notified when I upload more parts and other stuff on my channel then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. With that I just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.